Father, I'm confused. I'm doing a survey for a daycare project where I have to ask 20 people in Quahog if they voted for Mayor West in the mayoral election. Mayor West won, but 15 of the 20 people I asked didn't vote for him. How is that possible? Shouldn't more people have voted for him if he won? Well, you see, Stewie, the results you got in your survey could just be a matter of chance. However, it could also be affected by your sampling method. What's a sampling method? Your sampling method is the way that you get the people in your sample. What was yours? I went to our local grocery store and asked 20 random people as they walked out of the store. Okay, I see. What you did is called convenient sampling. That's where you pick the most accessible and convenient people. While it's the easiest method, it's not very representative of the population. Mayor West is not very popular in our neighborhood, so the results are not generalizable for the town. Okay, that makes sense, but what could I have done differently? I can't ask everyone. A better solution, while probably outside the scope of your project, would be stratified sampling, in which you divide the population into groups based on relevant characteristics and sample amounts from those groups relative to their size. For example, if Cohog had three different neighborhoods, making up 20, 30, and 50 percent of the population, you could go and ask four, six, and ten people from each one respectively. So I divide everyone in groups and take from those groups relative to their size? That makes sense, but aren't there more differences than just where they live? Yes, there are. Part of what makes statistics and surveying so engaging is that there's no one-size-fits-all approach. Depending on what you're asking, you can also separate by race, religion, gender, income bracket, age, etc. when it comes to politics. Thank you, Father. I'll keep this in mind if I have to do another survey. Sure thing, Story. Like and follow for more stats.